today, Lord. We uh, ask, Father, that you would guide us in the direction that you would have us to go. Uh, we are in need of your word more now than ever before, Father. Lord, as we come together, Lord, uh, we pray, Lord, that uh, all that is done would be for our good, ultimately knowing that all that is done for our good, you should receive all of the glory. Uh, take me, Lord, an imperfect man and use me in a perfect way as only you can. Take my mind and think with it. Take my mouth and speak with it. Uh, to the end that we will be strengthened and encouraged for this journey. Ultimately knowing that all that is done today is for our good. So guide us, lead us, bless us, protect us. Um, Spirit of the living God fall afresh on me. Spirit of the living God fall afresh on me. Break me, melt me, mold me, and make me. Spirit of the living God fall afresh on me. For it's in your son Jesus' name, my Christ, our Christ, the Christ, and all of God's children all together said amen. 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 As you can all stand and repeat after me, all scripture, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. Is given by inspiration of God. And is profitable. And is profitable. For doctrine. For doctrine. For reproof. For reproof. For correction. For, for correction. For instruction. For instruction. In righteousness. In righteousness. That the man of God. That the man of God. May be perfect. May be perfect, thoroughly furnished, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Unto all good works. Uh, today I have chosen um, the text coming from Romans, the book of Rome, Romans, Paul's letter to Rome. And um, I'm going to be dealing with uh, the 8th chapter, verses 29 through 39. But just for a context, I just want to just bring verse... 36 through verse number 39. Amen. There you will find these words. As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. This is the word of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. I greet you um, today uh, in the name of my Lord and Savior Jesus, that is my Christ. Um, um, it is good to be in the house of the Lord as always, and um, even following the ordinances or the directions of those that have been placed over us, um, it is good to be in God's Word. Amen? Um, my name is Pastor Exo Roby. I'm the pastor of uh, Third Baptist Church. We're at 582 East Ferry Avenue, Detroit, 48202. And uh, once everything has subsided, we invite you to come. Invite you to come and worship with us. Amen. Amen. Uh, I won't be before you long today. Um, I just wanted to give us a word of encouragement as we are in the midst of what we're going through. Amen. 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 We thank God for you, and you may be seated. Um, life can be challenging. It can be challenging at levels that. Um, each obstacle, each challenge that you face seems like it's even more challenging, even more intense, even more distressing than the most recent one that you've been through. Amen? Amen. I don't know if you've been through some things in your life, but I'm here to tell you that life is full of things. Amen? Um, if it's not one thing, it is another thing. Amen. Amen. And in the midst of going through what you go through, I encourage you to find yourself um, a scripture or two that encourages you to make it through what you're going through, those things of life that would challenge you. Amen. Amen. Myself, um, I have a scripture that I love and I read it and I live it and I, I utilize it because I know what it means to me and it is... Um, a scripture that I got when I was in Charleston, South Carolina, I was in Columbia, South Carolina. I had just lost my job. Um, uh, my life was in disarray. And Tony, it seemed like I had everything that could go wrong was going wrong. Amen. 
I don't know about you, but there are just times in life where um, it's, in, instead of just having one thing you're going through, there are times when you have things coming from multiple, multiple um, directions. Amen, Reverend Crawford? I, I don't know about you, but with children, um, you can have something going on with a child, and then you can have uh, something going on, I'm married, something going on with your significant other, with your spouse. You can have something going on with your finances. You can have something going on with your job. And then you can throw in something with your car. And then you can have something where your boiler is messing up in the house. So we have these things, these things, these things. Amen. But I'm here today to encourage you and to let you know that as you go through these things, first of all, you should be learning that God has got your back. Amen. Not only does God have your back, but God has this all worked out where it's going to work out for your good. Don't let it distress you. Don't let it mess you up. Don't let it make you quit. Keep your eyes focused on God because God is in charge. God is in control. And he knows where you're at. He knows what you're going through. And he will bring you through. Amen? Amen. Uh, we're in the amen. book of uh, Romans. Amen? We're in the eighth chapter now. For those of you that are Third Baptist members, you know, I like to give you a little bit of context on where we're at. And I'm going to just run through this real quick. But the Apostle Paul is writing this letter to Rome. And Paul has a way of writing where he will have a greeting at the beginning of the letter. And then after the greeting, he will have a prayer. And then after a prayer, he will have a mission statement on why he's writing the letter. He will go directly from there into doctrine or into uh, biblical doctrine, most likely tying it to the Old Testament, and following the doctrine portion, Paul will move into the part where he expects you to understand what your duty is now that you understand what the doctrine is. Amen? Uh, we find ourselves in the midst of chapter 8 shifting from dude, from doctrine into duty, and Paul starts it off, and if you were to go in and read in the 7th chapter, Paul has already laid the groundwork by telling us that 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 we should do, we do not. And that that we should not do, that is what we do. And we are wretched because of that. When we jump into the 8th chapter, we see where Paul begins to explain to us who God is, what God has for us, how God can do it, and how God can receive glory, be glorified through it. Amen? Amen. And today, I'm, just, I'm going to deal with just uh, the 28th chapter, just walk my way down so we can understand that we have tools. We have uh, resources that we can rely on as long as we are called of God. Amen? Verse 28, and it says, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose. Amen? Amen. Now, he says, And we know that all... Let me ask that question. Do you know that all things work together for your good? Yes. Do you know that all things are, 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 are tied together where God can take a calamity in your life, God can take a pandemic in your life, God can take a dark area in your life and bring it where you get good because of it? Amen. You know, I, I try to get people to understand that. Look, everything that God, everywhere God puts me, it is for a reason. It is for a reason because God is trying to teach me yes. something. And as long as I stay focused on the good of God, it will work out for my good. Amen. Regardless of what you're going through right now, if you are doing for good of God, God will work it out. Yes, you may not be working right now. I know people that aren't working that the money they're getting from unemployment is more than their actual paycheck they were getting three months before. And they, it's always working out for our good because God has it in his design to work it out. Amen. So all things work together for them, for good to them that love God. So the key point is, is you got to love God. Now, in order to love God, there are some things that you have to know about God. Amen? He says it right here. He says, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. Not only that, to them who are called. This word called means to be invited or to be appointed according to his purpose. If you want all things to work together for your good, find out what God's purpose is in your life and all things will work out. Amen? Amen. So the first thing is, is you got to know. You got to know that regardless of how things look, it is going to work out for my good. Amen? Amen? 
Not only that, look at verse 29, it says, For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. Amen? So there is a predetermined uh, 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 way that God has set things up in your life, and it is to be looked or to be conformed to the image of his son. Not only that, that his son might be the firstborn among many, many brethren. In other words, Jesus Christ, his death, his resurrection allows you to be new. Amen? Amen? And you're new because he is the first. And not only is that, but you should conform or follow. Uh, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. You should also be focusing on what Jesus Christ is focusing on, which is God's purpose in your life. Yeah. Amen? Amen? More over whom he did predestinate. Them also he called, and who he called, them also he justified. Next, we were justified by God, or in other words, we are rendered innocent. We're rendered righteous. And because we are justified, God can be glorified. Every time I pray, I say, Lord, uh, I, that we can, where I ask God that, Lord, everything that is done by this word is for our good, and ultimately that he should receive all of the glory. Every time I pray a prayer, I pray that God allows us to glorify him because we have been blessed by what he does. Amen? Amen. So the first thing is that we've got to know. I'm going to run through this real quick. Amen? And secondly, we got to understand that whatever we're going to, we can speak to. I keep telling, I'm going to say, I said it in my last sermon, that the situation that we are in, we have dominion, we have power over. It is, remember from the last sermon, we had to, uh, uh, there, were, there were four points, and in the four points, we had to humble ourselves, we had to pray, isn't that what it said? We had to humble ourselves, we had to pray, we had to repent. There is a way where we can put ourselves in a correct position with God through Christ where we're able to speak to the things that we're going through. Look at verse number 30, uh, 31, it says, what shall we say to these things? Amen. Whatever you're going through right now, you can speak to it. Whatever, whether it's your finances, you can speak to it. Whether it's your situation with your wife, your husband, you can speak to it. Whether it's your job, whatever it is, we can speak to it. It's right there. It says, what shall we say to these things? I'm going to tell you right now, it's in the Word of God. This is what you say to it. If God be for us, who can be against us? That is what you say to whatever it is you're going to right now. If God is for me, what, who can be against me? We can walk in the power of God when we are tied to the purpose of God. And when we have the purpose of God, you should understand that whatever it is that you're going to, you can speak to it. So you got to know it. Not only you got to know it, you got to speak to it. In the midst of this pandemic that we're going through, with an understanding that all things work for my good. Mm -hmm. Get that. All things work for my good. And what shall we say to these things then? This is how it works for your good. Ask it. If God is for me, who can be against me? Walking. Amen. So speak it. Not only do we speak it, it says, He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for all of us. Are y'all getting this? Are you getting this? All right, so we know it. We speak it. He that spared not his own. So look, this is what God did for us. He spared not his own son. He delivered him up for all of us. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? You see that? God will give you all things. God will work all things out for you. God has given you the power to speak to all things. Now I know when I say this word things, it is such a, a wide, a wide spectrum of, of, of issues. But God can control any issue. If you read your Bible, you will see the people of God overcoming so many things. Pharaoh, his armies, the Red Sea, all of the things that you see, that is why we read our Bible, so we can know that God can conquer all things. Amen? Amen. So we can speak to it. Amen? 
he says, he that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for all of us, how shall he, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? So we got to claim it. Amen? Okay. We have got to know it. We got to speak it. And when you speak it, you got to claim it. Now, what are we talking about? Whatever it is that you're going through, if God is for us, if God is for you, if God is for your family, whatever it is you're going to, speak to Him. Amen? Not only that, but claim it that God can freely give us all things. I, I had some interesting things transpire over the last several weeks. Um, and, and it's amazing because um, those things have allowed me, in the midst of a pandemic, they have allowed me, uh, Reverend Crawford, where in, in three weeks I'm going to be debt free. Mm. Wow. <laughs> See y'all, y'all not happy like I am because look, I was burdened down and, and I was, and you know, and I, I still I make what I make it. But the Lord has allowed it where I'm going to be completely debt free. That's how God freely gives you things. Amen. Amen. Now, four months ago, I didn't see it, Reverend Crawford. I didn't. I didn't see it. I didn't have an avenue to get to this point. And I had a plan. My plan was to be debt free in a year and a half. That's how long it was going to take me to get debt free. But God has allowed the, plan, the pandemic to help me to be debt free in less than three weeks. Mm. Amen. Now I'm not talking about prosperity or anything like that. I'm talking about how God can freely give you all things. I prayed. I said, Lord, I need a way to do this. I need a way to get debt free. And the Lord has allowed it. Amen? Amen. I'm just talking about God. I'm just talking Amen. about if God is for me. If God, look, if God is for, if he's for you, if he's for us, we can go to him. What can be against us? Amen? Amen. So who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifies, or it's God that renders, renders us innocent. Amen? So we've got to learn from God that he can justify us in any situation. That's why it says, who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? Amen? We are the elect of God. We are the call of God. And as long as we are doing according to his purpose, there are things that we can do for all the things that we're going through. Amen? Amen. We can speak to it. Amen? We got to know it. Amen? We can claim it. And then we got to redirect it. Amen? Amen? He says, who is he that can do it? It is Christ that died. Yea, rather, that is risen again. Amen? Now get this. Most people, when we celebrate Resurrection Sunday, Reverend Crawford, they, we, that's what we call it here. They call it Easter. Amen? Mm -hmm. And most people leave Jesus in the grave. Mm -hmm. They leave him in there. They don't function in the power that he gave us. They are celebrating a day where you might as well just give them good Friday and just let it, leave it at that because most people don't function under the power that Jesus Christ received after he was resurrected. Amen? Amen. It's right there. He says, it is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again. Amen? Amen? Not only that, who is even at the right hand, and get this, Christ is at the right hand of God. And because we are functioning under the purpose of God, through Jesus Christ, we have someone to intercede or make the intercession for us because he's sitting at the right hand of God. Help me, Holy Ghost. He sent the Holy Ghost. We have the Holy Ghost. And that puts us in direct communication with Jesus, who's sitting right next to God. So how can we not receive the good of God? Amen. It's right there in the text. I'm not making this up. These are the things that you're going through, and you have power over these things. He says, Yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, look, who also maketh intercessions for us. He intercedes for us. Anybody need some intercession before us? Tony, like I said, look, man, I, the, it, God, Christ, they interceded on my behalf, where I prayed about it, and it worked out for my good. Look, it worked out even better than for my good. <laughs> Why? Because it's about God's purpose. Amen? When we see ourselves doing God's work, mowing the line at the church that needs to be mown, uh, fixing
fixing the lights at the church that need to be fixed. Uh, painting the, 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 the steeples in the church. Cutting the weeds down in the back. This is God's purpose. Amen. Amen. This is God's house. Is your grass cut? Yeah. Is your house painted? Well, why can't you do it for God's house? And then you wonder why your stuff is always messed up. Because you won't do the things that God requires you to do for Him. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. So we redirect. He says, who is he that condemned it? It is Christ that died, gave rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also made intercessions for us. Now, we're getting ready to get to the, to, to, to the meat of this. It says, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Who can separate us from the love of Christ? Who, who can, I mean, who can separate us from the love of Christ? Look, you can't separate yourself from the love of Christ. Christ loves you regardless. Because Paul already said back in 7, he says, Oh, wretched man, we're wretched. We're all of us are wretched. Christ still loves you. Not, not past tense. He loves you at your darkest time. He, he loves you at, at your most vile time. He died for you. Who can separate us? Show tribulation. <laughs> Amen. Huh? Tribulation means affliction, anguish. Shall it be able to separate you from the love of Christ? So, what you're going through, will it separate you from the or, or look, look, look right there. Shall distress? Huh? Or persecution? Or famine? Or nakedness? Or peril? Or sword? Let me, let me make this point. When you look at this word persecution, when I went in and studied it, uh, Reverend Crawford, uh, it is where we get the word dogma, amen? And it's tied to ordinances. Shall ordinances separate you from the love of Christ? Shelter in place. This is, this is, we're in the shelter in place. That's an ordinance. That's an ordinance of man. Mm -hmm. And see, God is testing us right now. Is this shelter in place Social distancing going to cause you to be separated from Christ. So in other words, and, and see, this is challenging for most people because they set Sunday aside for their day to be with God. And then on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday is their day to do whatever they want to do. Mm -hmm. But see, God is allowing what we're going through right now to help us to get closer to Him. Mm -hmm. You're at home. Man. You ain't supposed to be going nowhere. That Bible that's in the corner that's been there for the longest, Amen. you need to dust it off, open it up, read the word of God, because if God is for you, who can be more than against you? Who can be against you? Huh? But see, most people don't know that because they don't read their Bible. They don't understand. Look, Romans 8, I told you, this came to me at a dark time in my life. Amen. And when I got it, look, I don't have dark times anymore. I just have situations that I'm waiting God to fix for me. <laughs> mm -hmm. Y'all miss that? Look, I don't care what you're going through. God will bring you through. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. He says, who shall separate, separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine? Look at these words. Famine, persecution, nakedness, lack, peril, swore. Look. As it is written. Now you need to get this. You need to get. And, and uh, I was talking to my children last night. Um, Brian and Jordan. Um, we were zooming, and I always make sure my children understand that I'm ready to go be called home to the Lord right now. I'm ready to. Look, we don't know what this life holds for us, so you better be ready. Now, some people would say it's morbid to think like that. No, you better get your mind right. You better get your relationship right with God because you don't know when he's going to call you. It says, it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. How many people have died in, in Michigan up to this point? Is it what, I know it's in the thousands, right? And, and, and most of those are in the immediate Detroit area. You see how we're counted as sheep for the slaughter? Look, we're all going to die if God delays to coming to Christ. That's a given. Amen? You're going to die. We are counted for as sheep for the slaughter. That's good. And you got to get that. 
You got to come to terms with it. And once you come to terms with it, you got to understand if God be for me, who can be against me? And as you walk through it, you have got to understand that even through being accounted for as sheep for the slaughter, we still are conquerors. Amen? It's right there. He says, nay. See, this, is touch, this touches me because I remember where I was at when I got to Scripture. I was listening to the radio. This is when I was in Columbia, South Carolina. And Yolanda Adams, she was on one of the radio, gospel radio stations. And they said, Yolanda, what is it that you, you, what scripture do you rely on when you're going through? This is 20 years ago, Tony. And she quoted the scripture right here. She says, nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. You see that? Mm -hmm. In all the things that you're going to go through, peril, tribulation, distress, persecution, Famine and all these things that you're going to go through, marital problems, financial issues, uh, homelessness, drug addiction, through all these things, get it, we are more than conquerors, amen? More. Well, why are we more than conquerors? Because Christ loves us, it's right there, through him that loves us. And I just want y'all to get this, I need y'all to get this right here, if there's anything you get out of this sermon, I need you to get this. He says, for I am persuaded. Now, when we look at this word persuaded is where we get our word pistis for faith. Your faith should teach you. Amen? That's what faith, faith is a substance of things hoped for, whatever the things I'm saying. Your faith, having faith in God, should teach you time after time. Because the first time you go to God in prayer, Tony, you go reluctantly and, and you go with uh, a lot of doubt in it. Can the Lord bring me through this? Lord, can you bring me through this? Well, I, I heard my mother pray when she was, when I was young and, and, and I learned from her that you know what, maybe I should turn this over to you and pray to you, Lord. Mm -hmm. So, that first time you pray it is a foundation, the building blocks that your faith is built upon. So maybe the next time you go through something, you're not so reluctant this time. And the next time after that, you go with a little bit more confidence that the Lord is going to bring you through. Right. And that's how our faith is. And that's when he says, I am persuaded. Paul is saying, look, I, through faith, have figured out by God doing what he does that neither death, get this, nor life, get this, death, Look, and see, we think death is the end. No, death is not the end. Death is the beginning. Amen? Death, nor life. Anything on this life. Angels, heavenly, heavenly beings, nor principalities. We deal with principalities on a regular basis, demonic principalities, and just different, different uh, realms of things that we deal with. No powers. Amen? No powers, nor thing present, nor things to come. You get that? None of these things. Why? Because we are more than conquerors. Do you know what a conqueror is? You know what a conqueror is? Reverend Crawford, I was watching Mike Tyson on TV. And, and everybody might fall. At one point, people stopped getting pay-per-view because they're like, man, the fight will be over in 10 minutes. So why I'm gonna, he was a conqueror. Anybody he got in the ring with up to a point, he defeated them. Not only did he defeat them, he defeated them soundly. Amen? We're more than conquerors. We are, look, our, our, our victory is, is, is so overwhelming that we can walk in it to a point where we are not impeded by it. You get that? He says, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded neither death, nor life, nor, I'm talking about these things, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present. Anybody going through something right now? Anybody? Nor things, look, it's right there, to come. Do you realize there are things waiting on you? Huh? Now remember God, you're predestined, amen? God foreknows everything, and if God be for us, what shall we say to these things? If God be for us, look, if God is for us, who can be against us? So those things that are waiting.
waiting on us, we're more than conquerors for it. Amen. Look, neither height nor depth nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. You see that? I don't know what you're going through right now. I know it's some times right now where it, it's challenging right now. You might not have enough food on your table. You might not uh, uh, know your outcome. Maybe you took a test and you don't know what it is. But look, nothing can separate us from the love of God. Get that. Which is in Christ Jesus. Get that. In Christ, Christos, the anointed one, Jesus, because we're talking about the resurrected. So look, we're, Jesus, we're talking about resurrected Jesus now. He died on Calvary for your sins, my sins, and when he was raised from the dead, he was given the title Christ. He has power in heaven. He has power on earth. And as long as we have the love of Christ, nothing can separate us from the Lord. Amen? Amen. I don't know what you're at. I don't know where you're at. I don't know what you're going through. But I want you to remember you got to know it. You got to speak it. You got to claim it. You got to redirect it. And then next week, you got to walk in the victory. Amen? Amen? Walk in the victory over whatever it is because Jesus Christ loves you. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Our Father and God, we thank you. We love you, Lord. We thank you for this word, Father. Lord, help us that we might walk in the victory and the conquering that we have in Jesus Christ. Lord, perhaps there's someone out that uh, is listening right now, Father, and they don't know who you are. Father, I pray that they would just say that they believe that Jesus Christ is your son. They believe that he was a perfect man on this earth, and that he died for their sins. And on the third day morning, he got up with all power. And Lord, if they pray that prayer, Father, Lord, we are confident, Father. We are persuaded, Father. That they are forgiven and they are in your fold as your children, Lord. We thank you, Father. We love you, Lord. But most of all, we thank you for your son, Jesus. For it's in his name that we pray. And all of God's children say amen. amen. We thank amen. God for you. We love you. Um, we ask that you would uh, continue in your word. Open your Bible up besides on, on, on Sunday. Read your word of God. Amen. Go in and find you a scripture that means something to you. And whenever you're going through, call it out. We thank God for you. We love you. Uh, my name is Pastor Exo Roby from Third Baptist Church, and we invite you to come join us uh, in worship when all this is said and done. We thank God for you. Amen. 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 Amen.